Hey folks, welcome to this episode of Road Hard Restorations. My name is Steve, and on this video, we're gonna be replacing this automatic shifter column with motorhome parts. As you guys probably already know from an earlier video, uh, this car was originally a manual transmission. Uh, it got uh, swapped out to an automatic at some point in its life. So it's got an automatic uh, steering column, complete with shifter still. So this is actually all gonna come out. So you can actually replace these upper column pieces with uh, any floor shift uh, vehicle, including motorhomes. A lot of motorhomes had the uh, the shifter in the uh, console area or in the center of the dash somewhere, uh, the top half of the column, you can just uh, pull it out and swap them out. So. Let's get this thing apart and see what we got. Oh, hold it even tight. <laughs> Little tip, put the nut back on here, and then uh, if you start pounding on it from the back side, it doesn't come flying off in your face. Okay, gonna need the puller. So I got the puller here. Let's see if I have the right bolts. See, this one's got a different thread. All right. Let's try this again. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Not so perfect. Make sure that you have your uh, washer on the outside so it catches. It doesn't help if it's on the inside. <laughs> So these are just running down till I meet resistance. Just bottom them out. You don't need to, they don't need to be very tight. The other thing that's important is make sure that they're even. So if one bottoms out further than the other, um, you want to back the other one out to match it. Um, also, you want to make sure that uh, um, you have enough engagement as well. You don't strip out the steering wheel. I don't recognize the steering wheel. I don't know if this is a factory style or or just a Grant or aftermarket one. We'll see once I pull it off if it has any markings on it. I don't recognize it offhand, but uh, don't know. Don't know all of my steering wheels. Here it goes. Just like that. It doesn't really take much at all. Unless it's really rusted or something. So I keep these two uh, fine thread bolts with, in the same drawer with the puller. So I'm going to go ahead and add these with it. So that way next time I need it, I'll have both sizes that I might need. Alrighty. See what I did there? If I had that nut, with that nut, if you would hit it, it's gonna stop it from flying in your face. I do have the original wheel that came out of this car, but it's a little funky and I don't know if it's savable or not. I haven't really looked at it that close. All right, so obviously I have the whole engine compartment gutted, but uh, generally if you're mucking about in here, you wanna make sure your, uh, your battery's uh, disconnected. You don't wanna short anything out. So I don't know if this is the right way to pull the uh, lock and tumbler out, but that's how that one comes out. Okay, all right, I'm gonna need a, looks like a Phillips screwdriver, and that'll take a slotted screwdriver or a nut driver. Since I'm going that way to the toolbox, got a return to make. See what we got here. I don't know if you guys can see that, all right. All right, let me see if I can get you guys in here a little closer. If you guys were interested in seeing what I'm doing here. So, oops, I left my uh, screwdriver handle, but I got this little guy. This screw here holds your turn signal, switch, and lever. It actually threads into the lever, so you don't have a nut on the back. 
So we'll have to see what we have to work with. I do have the uh, floor column, floor column. <laughs> I do have the floor shift column out of the 70 duster, but that was originally a uh, column shifter like this one is. And I switched it out. So if I put that one in here, I'll just have to source another one for the other car and kind of back to square one again. So the other one works fine in the other car, so I'm not worried about that. So I think I'm just gonna make this one work in this car. I know a lot of guys will just take the arm off and leave the rest, but that just isn't complete. Well, oh, well, that's garbage. Okay. This will come off of here. Should come off of here. And then tie it up with the wires. screwdriver here. Well, it's spinning. And it's just, no matter what, it's just spinning around circles. Trying to get it to catch on the, on the middle and actually back it its way out. It doesn't want to cooperate. Alrighty. Got my smaller screwdriver. I can get a proper bite on this screw because it's a smaller screw. Now what I'm doing is I'm prying up on this little bracket in here. Well, I'm trying to back it out. It does not want to move. Oh, this is really exciting, isn't it? Oh, it looks like there's a nut on the back and the nut's just spinning. That explains it. Got it. Oh, that was a pain in the butt. Huh. Voila. Ooh, looks like it's pulling the whole shaft right out anyway. Before this comes out too much further bound up by the wires here so I'm going to unplug it from underneath the dash here get a crawl under here find out what I have to work with here again anytime you're messing with these wires make sure you have the battery disconnected but obviously I did that a while ago these don't belong under there oh this is gonna be fun Okay. Oh man, you gotta see this. Ugh. Yeah, I said you gotta see this. So that's what we get to work with. My goodness. What have I got myself into? <laughs> got my little zip tie. Alrighty. Oh man, these are brittle. These at least look like they're intact. Goes to the main harness. Except for this one that was uh, wire nutted. I don't know where that one goes. Probably the other end of this. No. Oh. This looks like it got pulled out of here. interesting okay well got two wires up here going somewhere oh never mind all right so this is all stuff coming out of the column so we'll see if we can get these threaded back through here go ahead and pull this oh that's interesting and take this channel off that houses the wires a couple ways i can do this i can just cut these here the wires are already kind of broken and frayed. Or I can take the uh, plug off the end, pull them through, or take the column all apart, 
which I'm going to do eventually. There's a channel here that comes out that I can thread this through, but since this thing's already pretty much jacked, I'm just going to snip her. Normally I wouldn't do this, but here it goes. This thing's junk anyway. Right, right, exactly right. So, not with the old. Oh, that's interesting. So this is, these are two piece collapsible steering columns. And they're not supposed to come apart like that. At least not that easy. There's the little plastic that uh, kind of keeps the two pieces tight together. So when you slide them in, it should stay put. So that will take some work. Let's go ahead and get this ignition switch out here. There's that little nut that was on that screw. It was giving me trouble earlier. Alrighty. All right, I don't think there's anything wrong with this ignition switch, so I don't want to cut these wires. I do have another new one, but however, get these out of the way here. It is still attached to the harness underneath here, which is all buggered up as well. The buzzer, I think, for the uh, key. So when you're working on something like this, make sure you get yourself a good set of screwdrivers. I mean, you don't have to have one of these off brands, but I mean, even a Craftsman's good enough. I mean, I don't take these out to the track and stuff. You know, I'm going to the boneyard, pulling parts out of cars. You don't want to accidentally leave one of your brand over there. You want to keep keep that in your box at home. Oh, this thing's all busted up in here. No wonder that ignition switch is just coming out. So regardless, this whole unit here is going to get replaced. So just trying to save all the bits and pieces that I need. Ooh, the next fractional size up. Now another tool tip. A lot of guys will have a whole drawer full of nut drivers. Why well, get a whole drawer of nut drivers taking up valuable real estate in your toolbox? When you already have a set of quarter inch drive sockets, just get yourself a nut driver handle like this one. Then you have every size that you need. And it doubles as an extension. And when you get one of these types of screwdriver handles for your quarter inch drive sockets, Make sure you get the one that has the uh, shank that goes all the way through. So I've seen some cheapy ones that have stop here, it gets pressed in, and then you have this little piece on the other side. If you put too much torque on it, you just crack the handle. And my toes and ankles are falling asleep sitting here in the car without a seat. Oh man, oh, I'm getting too old for this, okay. Let's try another position here. Big here. All right, come on out. All righty. Part two. Ooh, it's a little pointer. Somebody might need that. All right, I think. And then I got a roll pin here to take out, pull the arm off. But that's just gonna come off with the collar anyway, so that don't matter. So it looks like I just need to get the uh, get this whole column out. I was hoping to be able to just kind of disassemble it, just kind of connect it to the dash because it uh, works as a kind of a, a mounting vice to hold this stupid thing, so I can wrench on it. But yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to pull it apart. Oh, look. 
already have my sockets here. I just do it right now. Should have a third one. Maybe he does have a third one. Let's see. Where are you? Huh. This one doesn't have a third one. Interesting. The 70 had a third one. Had a third bolt under the dash. This one only has the two. Alrighty. Well, it might be that way. There we go. All right, that one's definitely different. All right, here's that little channel underneath here. Right, here's that little channel. Oh, it's plastic on this one. Huh. Definitely feels 73 or four-ish. Everything's going plastic with the old, on these newer ones. All righty before. I'm not used to working on an old car that's new before. All right, let's take a look here. That wire is in my way. Okay, so let me straighten these out a little bit. I should be able to snake this through. I can't see because I'm sitting outside. There we go. Right, perfect. Now I can take this little guy, run this out, pulling this uh, light out. Pretty much have just about all the wiring out of this car. So I'm going to put it all together on the workbench, make sure every inch is in good shape, every connector has the proper ends on them for every switch, every light, every circuit. That way I know when it goes back into the car, yeah, everything's accounted for. Alrighty, how is this supposed to go through that? That doesn't make any sense. So this is, this wire is riveted here to this light fixture. Wire goes through this little hole. Comes out this side, down and around. And then, you know, goes around here, but goes straight into there. So you have to actually depin it in order to get the light, uh, the light uh, fixture out of here. Let me get my pinning tool and put it back. All right, got my little multi-tool here. Gotta look at the uh, the pin out here. You now these are obviously round. So you find a round one that's gonna fit, which I don't know if I have one that's gonna fit here. Ha! Huh. Ah, it did fit, but I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> I hope I pay attention to which one I'm doing here. Well, use this one as a demonstration. Alrighty, so this has, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a little tang, tang, tang on either side. You gotta compress those from the outside. Ah, oh, there we go. As you go over the top of it, it squeezes them down. And then, then you just pull this out. So this does not fit in the hole though. All right, so I don't have the right size for this particular one. Yeah, the brute force method doesn't work either. <laughs> don't have enough clearance on the sides to go with the double-sided piece here. Ah, got it. So what I did is just kind of work this piece and down alongside of it and then just kind of twisted it until it depressed the uh, tangs, kind of mangled them up. 
but I can get in here and just pull them out again, probably using the same tool. There we go. Pushes them back out. And then next time you push it in the hole, it'll clip on. And I can proceed with removing this. Now I know I'm not gonna be using this wire on the other column. So yeah, why are you bothering to take all this apart? Well, I still may need to use the rest of this. So I need the wire out of my way anyway. Number one. Number two, this piece. Still perfectly good and intact. Let me put that on eBay. Somebody could use that. It's a factory wire with the factory end on it. Plug and play. All right, so I should be able to pull this out. Be careful about this little guy. I don't want to break him. See, there's a little screw up here. I don't want to have a screw up here. <laughs> so now I think there's uh, three more screws holding the like a base plate of sorts to the firewall. Dead bee on the floor. Kind of creepy. Oh, what else is down here? I just got a new shop back. I need to put it to work. Suck up that little dead bee. These long, boring screws is definitely where the uh, power tools come in handy. Right out now. Uh, that was almost too easy. Let's say something funny. When they put this on, and there's this arm here, it's supposed to go down to the transmission for the shifter. Well, they just bent it and wedged it before, between this plate and the floor. <laughs> Let me see if I can get these pieces uh, <laughs> disassembled the rest of the way on the workbench. But uh, first, we gotta clean the workbench. This is a uh, Stanley, made in USA. Looks like a dog got to it. Or a really frustrated mechanic, I don't know. I don't know, this thing's probably 40 years old, I don't know. This one just happened to have the right angle on it that will bite this into the screw properly so I can get it uh, out of there. This elbow. I'm able to save this little pointer. Do hickey. All right, so this isn't the workbench uh, that I was talking about, but my other workbench, a little preoccupied with all the parts. So this is what I'm working with just for right now. Let's see what I need to do to get this thing apart. Looks like there's a socket head screw in here, but you can't get a uh, tool on there because the arm's in the way. So I'm gonna have to roll, uh, drive out this roll pin and then uh, that I can get my tool in there to un unscrew that. And this should come off of there. I'm looking at all the scratches. Uh, oh, somebody's been beating on this already once before. Okay, so I got two sets of punches here. Um, a lot of guys will just use these, just a regular pin punch. Um, this is a set of Allen pin punches. But right, since this is a roll pin, get yourself a set of roll pin punches. These have these have this little bump in the middle that uh, centers the punch on the roll pin. You locate the right size. We'll keep it from walking off on you. We'll keep it centered. So it's for use on roll pins only. That's exactly what I'm gonna be doing with it. So let's see if I can chuck this in the rice. Drive this puppy out of here. It is mangled all to hell. 
See, that's why you don't use a screwdriver or whatever they use here. I don't know if they use a jackhammer on it. But let's see what we can do just here on the floor. Now, if I cared about this, I would uh, probably use wooden blocks or something. But it's already beat to hell and I'm not going to be reusing it. And when you're driving these in, if you got a punch that's too uh, a little bit too big, it's going to wedge itself in the hole, and then you're going to be fighting the resistance of this squeezing its way through the through the hole, and then you're going to have to figure out how to drive it out the other side again. And uh, so you want to make sure you use the right the right size, or you just make it more work for you later. Like that. Check your tool, make sure it didn't bugger it up too bad. Starting to mushroom over just a little bit here. It was like that before, but you can always dress that up on a file. It's a light filing. Clean it up. That'll cause it to uh, bind up in the hole too. And that's out. And if you had to, you could reuse it, but uh, like I said, I'm not putting this thing back together in the car, so I'll just throw it in the box with the rest of the spare parts, and next guy can figure out what he wants to do with it. I'm just going to tap this in here real quick. All right, so I just tap that in there real quick just to keep it from getting lost. All righty. There's a spring in here. And looks like I'm gonna need a hex key to get that little guy out of there. So let me get my hex drivers and I'll be right back. All right, let's see what uh, size I need here. Looks like it is this size. In case anybody cares, it is it is one eighth inch. Alrighty, so. You can see in there where that uh, screw is. People call it set screw, grub screw. Socket head screw. Some people might even call it an Allen screw but I'm not using an Allen wrench. I'm using a snap-on wrench. There we go. And this one has the little ball end on it. So I can go at a weird angle, shove it through the hole here into the grub screw here, set screw, and pull it out. Just like that. Okay, and then there's the outer collapsible tube. This piece will definitely go back in the car. Looks like I might need this uh, seal. Put that in my parts pile. Maybe something else to order. Set him aside, get him cleaned up and painted later. And here's the other piece. Not really going to do too much with this. It is also collapsible or telescoping. It's got more of that uh, plastic in there. I think this will go back in the car as well. I just need to remove this or just cut this off. I should leave this on there. It's not going to hurt anything. But this thing is going to be in the way. It's going to be good to go. One of the things I'm going to do is I'll put this back in here so you don't lose the screw. Here we go. Last bit of the steering column to take apart. And it's got the snap ring in here. And another tool tip here. They have uh, some kind of universal ones here. They come with uh, a bunch of multiple uh, tips you can put in there for different sizes, different angles. Some are 45, some are 90 degree angle. You just need a little hex key to loosen those, pull the tips out, put your other ones in, screw it back together. 
you do for uh, external snap rings or you push these through the other way and it'll be for internal so it works both ways um, there's this style here um, I have a whole set of these at different sizes and angles this right here is really all you need because one size fits all and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room in your box but since I already have a bunch of these I'm going to use them this is for external or you can switch this to the other side flips them around so when you squeeze it it works for an internal so let's see if I can Ooh, you know what this one's not gonna work can't get in there so I'm gonna grab another one Alrighty. Let's see if these will even fit in the little holes here the holes are really small on this one so you put it in the hole squeeze it and get it up there as far as you can Try to get the holes in there nice and square and straight. It's hard to do that and hold show you on the camera at the same time. <laughs> but anyway, just like that. So if you never use a snap ring plier, there you go. And this should slide right off of here. But it's a little crusty around there. Ah, there we go. This one's a little noisy. But it's not like you have a lot of a lot of free spin on that in the car anyway so it'll do just fine i'll clean it up re-oil it and then uh, reassemble it on the new collar when i get it now this little guy looks like there's another different type of snap ring on there it doesn't use the little pins i'm not sure if i'm going to use this locking ring or not depending on the collar setup I can make it work fine. If not, I'll use the press and drive it off. No big deal. Provided I can still utilize this contraption here, put it all back together with the lower half, make sure it's the right length, and then uh, be all set. Put it back in the car, put it back in service. All right, on to the next thing. All right, time to get the rest of the column out here. Uh, it's got the coupler on the steering box. Then we got the lower shaft going into the coupler. So I'm gonna need to get my roll pin punches again, knock this out, and then we can go ahead and pull this off and then take this apart on the bench. All right. Just like that. All right, I got the pin out. Came out pretty easy. Now we just need to get the uh, coupler off of the box. So this thing's actually loose on here, but I think the splines aren't lining up on the other side. So. All right, you gotta be real careful so you're not beating on the threads, marring them up. It actually didn't take much. It actually didn't take much effort or force to knock that off of there. This is kind of a, a rounded shape, so it's just kind of hanging on. So I just came back from the parts washer. Just gave us a once over real quick. Uh, I'll go over it again, clean it up before I go and put it back in the car. But I got the uh, the bearing all freed up. Get that re-greased. You guys have probably seen these before. A little retainer clip and the shoes. And then I got that little guy cleaned up a little bit. Still got some grease down in there, but uh, I guess I just wanted to give it a once over real quick. Now you can buy these uh, these pieces along with the roll pins and a kit. Um, honestly, I don't like spending money on parts just for the sake of changing parts. Uh, if they're not worn out, go ahead and reuse them. Um, it's not really a real heavy wear item as far as I know. You know, if your steering wheel is really loose, most likely in the box or like in the pitman arm, idler arm, whatever, you know, I don't know how much the kit costs, $15, $20, $50. I don't know what they are nowadays, but 
save your money, put it towards uh, something that uh, something that you need uh, because you don't have to change those. Uh, just clean them up, regrease them. Um, you'll probably need the boot and the retainer. Um, that's about it. Let me show you a little bit about the lock and tumbler that I got out of this car. Um, it's just pretty much junk. It just kind of spins around like Emmett's head. But um, there's supposed to be a little pin right here with a little spring behind it that locks it in. See right here? You just push it down and it releases it. Then you can pull it out. So you have to push that. But since it's gone, it just pulls right out. So this is junk. Probably wind up using the one that I got at the wrecking yard because I got a key with it. Um, or I might just buy a whole set. That way it matches the doors and everything, which is probably what I'll do. One of the things you'll also notice is if you try to pull it out with the key, it won't work either. You gotta take the key out. So what happens when you have the key in there, this little arm pops up. And what that does is that pushes on the little buzzer button. I got myself in a nasty old motorhome, but uh, found the uh, column I think I need. I think that'll work. It's got the shifter on the dash. So all three pieces are there. I didn't bring my tripod, so I didn't get to show you taking this thing apart, but it came apart pretty easy. I got uh, top, middle, and bottom pieces. I think that'll work. Let's go compare it to the old ones. All right, sun's starting to go down, but there's uh, another steering column up there, but it's got two holes drilled in it for a horn button. But I uh, found another one right here. Wires are already cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and snag that one as well. Well, I'll be darned. This one's got the key for it. Sweet. Nice. All right, I just got back. There's the, uh, the original one. There's a spare. And here is my floor shift column now. That's perfect. Not too bad. I think these will clean up pretty nice. It's just pot metal. Take these, clean them up, paint them. Put it all back together, stick it back in the car. All right, two of these columns that I got from the uh, from the wrecking yard out of RVs. Um, one's a 72 and one's a 73. Um, I looked them over. Uh, I don't see any difference between the two other than one has 72, one has 73. So comparing each piece by piece, there's the two top collars. They're virtually identical on the inside, front and back. With the exception, naturally, of the automatic shifter differences. Here's the middle pieces. Everything is there, identical. No difference at all. Turn them around, look at the back. Same exact thing. This one still has the uh, shifter gate on it. I just haven't finished taking it off yet. And then the bottom piece. One thing I noticed that the automatic one has, it's got that set screw in there to hold it on to, to lock it to the uh, inner tube. This one right here has the, this one here has the provision for the set screw along with an access hole. But uh, neither of these actually had the set screw in them off of those motorhomes. So when I go to reassemble this, I may put that in there just to keep it from rattling around. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. In a future video, I'm gonna be putting that steering column back together, going through all the wiring in the car, getting this engine cleaned up, painted, ready to go back in, installing an 8.8, .8, going through the four-speed transmission, all of the body and paint, electrical, interior, everything, bumper to bumper. I'm gonna take you through the whole process. See you in the next one. Let me get my pinning tool and put it back. <laughs> yeah, that didn't uh, go as planned.